Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about the Andor series and we begin with a couple of new stills that come courtesy of Total Film. The first one reveals what looks to be a new species. Now at first I thought this was a herglick but I don't think so, it's much more whale-like. But I'm loving the new aliens, the new droids. The Andor series means business when it comes to world building. Now in the next photo we have our first look at Catherine Hunter's character, E.D. Khan, the mother of Carl Solis' character, Cyril Khan. Now they seem to be at some sort of space cafe having a chat. I've seen some complaints that this doesn't look Star Warsy enough, but you've got to bear in mind guys that this show is all about the nooks and crannies of the Star Wars universe, the dark underbelly, the characters and locations that get forgotten, showing us everyday people during the reign of the Empire. In my opinion it seems like this, that expand upon the world building element of shows, so I'm all for it. And so finally we have Cassian walking down a dark alley at night. This picture screams spy thriller. Now along with these new stills, we also have some new details, and we begin with an article elaborating on Catherine Hunter's new character. Let's dive into it. Celebrated stage and screen actor Catherine Hunter, most recently seen in a film-stealing turn as The Witches in The Tragedy of Macbeth, is making her Star Wars debut in Andor we can exclusively reveal. This is from Games Radar, by the way. In an interview with Total Film Magazine for the Andor feature in the new issue, Carl Soller revealed that Hunter is playing E.D. Khan, the mother of his character Cyril. In the Disney Plus series set before the events of Rogue One A Star Wars Story, Cyril is determined to stop Cassian Andor and quash any spark of rebellion. Cyril Khan, who we saw prominently in both the teaser and final trailer, is very much an integral part of the Empire at this stage. And Carl Solo, who plays him, teases that what drives him comes from his background. In his own words, he said, he doesn't have a father. He was raised by his mother, who is sort of a stage mother from hell. He has an extreme sense of need to impress and fill a hole in himself. And so that really is about ascending to the top of whatever field he's in. The field he's chosen is one of restriction and complete control, and one of domination. Sola says, I think we've been able to thread that through with the scenes that Cyril has with his mother. So those scenes are basically going to serve to show us how he got this way, how he became obsessed with control, obsessed with dominating, and the urgent need to impress Palpatine. Kyle described working with Catherine Hunter as a complete gift, and speaking about Tony Gilroy's approach to the show, which is going to span five years ahead of Rogue One, Sola added, Tony wrote this incredible tapestry of life. It's really Dickensian in its scope and its achievement. He says, I'm only of course speaking from Cyril's trajectory. And he says, Tony then brings it down to incredibly personal, incredibly small domesticity, and almost turning it into a pinter play. And his final comments, which are very telling, is that he's never seen a Star Wars movie or series like this. He says, the combination of action, mystery, intrigue, and then you have the incredibly unique personal stories, those come through the most. So very exciting stuff. He compares it to Dickens, Pinter, very different concepts to what we've been told so far, so I'm really excited for the small surprises and themes that this show brings. And so speaking of Tony Gilroy, we have a new interview with the showrunner himself, where he once again discusses the outline of the show, but he also sheds light on why fans should not only be excited for the first season, but also for season two. This is what Games Radar wrote. New Star Wars show Andor is just weeks away, and the great news for franchise fans and converts alike is that Andor Season 2 has already been given the green light, with production starting in November. Hailed by showrunner Tony Gilroy, the showrunner seems more excited for the second season than he does the first, and this is what he said, we have four blocks of three episodes coming up for Season 2, and each block will move you one year closer to Rogue One, and because it's a year each time, we can do something really fascinating narratively that you would never have the chance to do in a film. It's exciting. Writing. To say that star Diego Luna is stoked would be an understatement. He says, it's a beautiful moment. We're getting ready. Things are being written and questioned, going back and forth. It's beautiful to live in that process from beginning to end. And Diego Luna also teases that season two is where fans are really going to start to get answers. As Games Radar points out, if season two fills in the last gaps on the Andor timeline, then it's inevitable we're going to see the return of Cassian Andor's K2SO and how they met. We already have it in the comics, but Tony Gilroy in the past is teased, we're going to see that on screen in season 2. Not only this, but the connections with Rogue One and other elements of the Star Wars universe are really going to start to happen in that season. They say the series will marry up with the movie, but also offer some stark, startling contrast. It says a lot that his best friend in the movie is a droid, and while by the time of Rogue One, Cassian Andor is a very different character, in this show, we're going to meet someone very different. This Andor, as I've said in the past, is very different to the one we know. He's got to go through a lot in his personal journey. Super exciting stuff 
guys. Another actor who's teased their role in the Andor series is Denise Goff. In a new interview that is a bit out of left field, she's talked about how her character arc, quote, addresses gender politics in the age of Palpatine. Let's see what she said. So Andor might be named after Diego Luna's character, but as we know, as we've been told by many of the actors, this series focuses on multiple characters. And she says, quote, she's happy we're not just talking about another Sith sausage party. Denise Goff says, I'm definitely on the dark side. She plays an Imperial officer called Dedra Miro, and she's happy that, quote, it's a woman in that outfit. It felt really, really great. She teases that Dedra Miro's arc is going to address gender politics in the age of Palpatine in a timely fashion. She says, as a woman in that world, for her to advance in any way, she has to be like 10 times better than anyone else in the room, and that felt really relevant to everything we're going through right now. As such, she believes that viewers will be on Dedra's side, to a point anyway, they're humanizing her. She says, it's a clever thing to do, to show you how hard she works, it kind of brings you in to feel cheerleadery for her, and then you'll be like, she's a psycho, so be careful of supporting her. And speaking on the dynamic between Dedra and Andor, all the spoiler mindful, Goff says she's not particularly fond of him, but she's not the only one. And just as Carl Soller teased, it's Cyril Khan, his character, who's the one obsessed with Andor. I do find the way she worded some of this a bit peculiar, unless they're going to show the Empire being explicitly discriminatory, but Denise doesn't go into any detail as to what she means by this. But she is right to an extent in the sense that in the original trilogy, we don't have any Imperials who are women, but in Rebels, Fallen Order, Kenobi, the sequels, and so on, it is a varied mix on that side of things. But because Andor is going to humanize these characters more, she might be talking about the everyday struggles of a female Imperial. Let's wait and see, I don't want to judge the show before it drops, but because Andor is going to be very explicitly political, they might make that a point in the story. Then if so, I see what she means. Interesting to keep in mind. And now speaking of the Andor series, we do have a bit of a tease from voice actor Stephen Stanton. He, as you might know, is a Star Wars veteran at this point. He voiced Tarkin in The Clone Wars, The Bad Batch and Rebels, Massa Mida and Gascon in The Clone Wars, a few characters in Resistance, he played a pike in the Book of Boba Fett, and most significant to this news update, he voiced Admiral Rados in Rogue One, one of the biggest heroes of the Rebellion. So why do I bring him up? Because, as pointed out to me this morning by Matt Rissman from our Discord community, Stanton has really been hyping up Andor in a way that sounds as though he's involved. On a weekly and sometimes daily basis, he posts about the Andor series, counting down to the release, and while this could be in support of his co-stars, by the sounds of things and given how invested he is, it's sounds as though he was involved, so the question arises, which character did he play if he was in the show? Could he be once again voicing Rados, he is a logical character to appear, or maybe Masamida, who is also rumoured to make an appearance, or maybe both, as well as new characters as well. He is, after all, a versatile voice actor. Some really interesting food for thought, we really don't know at this stage, we're just gonna have to wait and see. And so finally, my dear friends, Colin Trevorrow, who originally was going to direct episode 9 and who wrote the original script to the film, which was titled Jewel of the Fates, has now opened up once again about the possibility of returning to Star Wars in the future. In a new interview with comicbook.com, the Jurassic World Dominion director was asked if he would ever return to the galaxy far, far away after being let go for episode 9, which, by the way, he took very personally. Well, to put it simply, he's between I don't know and very unlikely. This is what he said. I don't know, not because of Star Wars, Wars, but because I feel like I spent eight or nine years making new versions of the things we love when we were kids, in one place or another. There's a lot of pressure on that. It casts a shadow over everything else you want to do. In the case of making a small film after Jurassic World, I was the director of Star Wars when I made it. I think that, to be able to step out of that a little bit and not have everything I do be in the context of our belief systems is interesting to me. And as he says, there is a lot of pressure, and it makes sense he wants to step away from these big franchises, these franchises that means so much that have huge fan bases that will be scrutinized one way or another. And look, as cool as Jewel of the Fates sounded, and I know a lot of people have been talking about it, it was never going to happen. Lucasfilm had creative differences with him, so they brought in J.J. Abrams. But looking forward and asking the question, could he ever be part of Star Wars, it does not seem as though he's interested. So let's wait and see, but I think the answer is very, very unlikely. But share your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. Would you like to see Colin Trevorrow direct a Star Wars movie in the future? What do you make of all of the Andor up updates and everything we spoke about in today's video. If you enjoyed this one guys, as always, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new and a huge welcome if you are, but until the next one, may the force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg, have a good one.